Hey there, this is Derek Murphy. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Pinterest. So I actually have a Pinterest account and I tried to set it up a little bit earlier this year, but I mostly don't really use it. Um, but it can be really good for generating traffic, which means it could also be really good for book marketing. And so I'm gonna show you a few little tricks um, that I'm gonna be using in my latest book launch. You'll probably want to create an account um, with some keywords in it that appeal to your audience. So this is my nonfiction account. I don't really use it for promoting fiction. If I was promoting fiction, I would say something like young adult fantasy um, writer or young adult fan club. But I actually use this for fiction and nonfiction. So you'll see that I have some stuff like this and then some um, image or art cards that relates to my genre. In my bio, I have a short a professional description of what I do and a link to my main website. So Pinterest basically is a social media platform centered around image sharing. So you can share a picture from anywhere on the internet and put it in a Pinterest board so you can find it again later. And that's okay because um, Pinterest doesn't actually copy the picture and add it to its website, which would be reproduction, they would have copyright problems. Um, it's okay because they're only kind of resharing it from the original. So if anybody clicks on an image, they can click the link and go back to the original site that the picture was saved on, which is really good for you in terms of traffic. Um, because if you have a lot of pictures on Pinterest that people are finding, they might click back to your, to your own website. The other thing I'm kind of excited about trying is promoting a pin because you can advertise. So I could advertise a book cover or a new release, um, which may not necessarily be the, the promote, p promoted pin that I really want to do. I think the reason to promote a pin would be other people would share it and repin it, which would drive more traffic to your site. So I would want to promote a pin that was really great advice or very actionable. This would be easier for nonfiction. I could have a list of like, you know, how to do X or the best ways to do X or seven tips to whatever. And the value is instead of having like a whole blog post that people have to read, if you can squeeze the best content onto one image graphic or infographic, people can just share the value and they'll just have a checklist they can go back to. It just makes it a lot easier and more visual. So here on my overview, I have um, latest pins, which is just whatever. I have been trying to make these for my main blog, Creativity. So here you'll see the link to my website and the title. I haven't really optimized these or anything, um, but if you click on any of these to zoom in, then it would show the website and I could click on that. And that takes me to this um, blog post. However, I, I don't think this works as well as actually making an infographic. Like instead of just having this image to, to my blog post and the blog post title, if I actually showed the eight best typefaces and showed them all on this infographic, that would be a lot more valuable. A lot more people would reshare it. People on Pinterest don't necessarily want to go and click over on your website, which is also why you kind of need a call to action. So you want your site, your uh, image to be really actionable and interesting and detailed and kind of have all the best stuff like the value of the stuff should be on the image not just like the title that's referring to a blog post but for basic blog content it doesn't hurt to do this kind of stuff so i actually have two versions there's one big rectangular one um, that would show up in search results on the blog and then on the actual blog post, I just make one of these, which is the same thing, but it's optimized for Pinterest. So someone could just share this if they wanted to. I tried to design a pin that kind of matched my brand. Um, it doesn't exactly, and I'm going to redo my, my website soon. So I don't know that this style will keep. So here's one that's a little better. Um, this is just a checklist that I made. So this one actually has... 12,000 impressions, which is way more um, than any of the others, and has 70 saves, 17 clicks. So not a lot of clicks going to my website, but I don't really have a call to action or anything either. If I scroll down on the other um, posts on the board, these are posts I grabbed from other people that I just thought were useful or interesting. You want your board and a board is like a category um, to be about 50% your stuff and about 50% other people's stuff. 
So back on my main um, profile, if I go down to boards, it will show me the categories that I've made. And you want to pick categories that kind of fit with your brand. So some of these, if you are doing personal boards, you can just make it so that nobody else sees it. I have a couple of those. Um, but then you want your public boards to really say something about um, you and your brand. You could also, if you write fiction, have an inspiration board. I think I started a couple of those. Um, if I scroll down, I have one for dark fantasy and paranormal art, basically. I have one for editing and grammar for book butchers. And then here's one just for like mermaids and Greek myth, which is um, just a really broad topic. Best young adult mermaid books. This one I actually made a blog post and my blog post was best young adult mermaid books for, for teens. And I had all these book covers and I just pinned each one of these um, book covers on this post and it all goes straight back to that blog post about the best young adult mermaid books. So that seems like it should work pretty well for um, traffic, except I don't think these pins have really gotten a lot of visibility because I don't use Pinterest very much. Pinterest really makes it easy to discover new images that are similar to what you're looking for. Um, and then you can just save them to your own board so you can find them later. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of book marketing with Pinterest. And what I've done is I set up a new board. If I go to boards, and the book is actually called um, The Genius of Solitude. So I'll change this really fast, but that might not be what I stick with. And I would have a short description about the book. So this could be something like um, the blurb, maybe a review or a quote from the description. What kind of board is it? I'm going to say quotes in this case. I can change the cover if I want to. And then I could make this um, a secret board if I don't want other people to see it. And I can add other collaborators. So you can have um, a group board that multiple people can um, work on together, which can be really useful if you're teaming up with other authors. For now, I'm just going to save that. And I also want to do some keyword research. So this book is kind of about the philosophy of solitude, but it's also about creative happiness, um, creativity. What I want to do is just type in a, a word and see what comes up. So I can say creativity inspiration, creativity quotes. That's kind of what I want to be looking for. So I opened a word file and I'm just going to write down or copy all of the keywords really quickly, just so I kind of know what's going on. Um, I might search for lonely or loneliness. Let's see what comes up. Lonely quotes again. So I'll write that one down. Solitude. Yeah, quotes is a really popular one. So I'm basically going to try to rank for all of those things. So the next part is to make some content. I actually have two posts um, already. On the first one, I have kind of an introduction to the book. And then I have some of these. So these are just really simple quotes. I actually think I made them um, in Microsoft Word. I just um, changed the fonts and styled them a little bit. So I have a bunch of those. This is a unique project because it's an older book and there's just a lot of really good quotes in it. So I just um, made a bunch of these. There's kind of spread out through here. And even these, this is actually a block quote in WordPress. Um, so that's not an image graphic that I can share but I could just take a screenshot of that and upload that on Pinterest. So I have a bunch of these. I have a couple product images. This is actually the old uh, cover. I'm gonna use a new cover. And then down at the bottom, I have a link to another gallery. And this is really, I'm not doing a lot of marketing for this book, so I'm just gonna kind of try out Pinterest and see um, how well I can do with just Pinterest. It's actually doing really well because I just launched it and I kind of announced it to my um, my audience quietly. And so it's catching up with the War of Art. It'd be nice if I, you know, stick past the War of Art, but since I'm not really going to be running a lot of um, advertising or paid traffic, I could probably charge a higher price and just advertise and make it profitable and make it stick. I might try that out, um, but I'm also fine with kind of giving this one away. 
But even at 99 cents, I couldn't really afford to um, advertise profitably, which is why it can be really useful to use other forms of content marketing um, like images, image graphics, and Pinterest, because that should just always bring you some visibility without paying for uh, the visibility. So what I should be able to do again is go down here to boards and I'll find that boards again that I set up. Now I have a list of keywords that I kind of want to try to rank for. Um, just a bunch of things about quotes mostly because that's what I'm focusing on. So I'm going to click on this board and then add some pins. So I'd go up here to add a pin and it'll ask me if I want to add a section or create a pin. So I could have, um, I could like break up the quotes into different topics. If I had a nonfiction book that was about um, several different things, I could structure the whole page like step one, step two, step three, or the three secrets to whatever. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go to create a pin. And so if I had all these on my desktop, um, I could just add the title, say more about this pin. I'll actually do that really quickly. And I just copied the um, stuff from Amazon, which is probably way too much. Yeah, it's not going to let me use all of that text from my Amazon blurb. So I just added a call to action down there. So I'm going to drag and drop um, the cover. Maybe I'll use this one. It's not really, you really want a longer one for Pinterest, but that's okay because it looks nice. This little pop-up says I can monetize by tagging products. And so then I can insert a product or affiliate link. That's kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead on Amazon um, and grab my link. You want to be careful with your Amazon link not to use the whole thing because it has all this re referring information. Um, you want to make sure you get a clean link, which ends after the ASIN number, which is right here. So before this ref, because that will tell Amazon that you are sending people there. Um, so for example, if you send out a link with refer, refer information to all of your followers, Amazon will know that all of those reviews are um, biased and they might delete some of those reviews. So you want to get a clean link by just grabbing this part. And then I'm going to put that in there and see what happens. That didn't actually work, so maybe I can't do it with Amazon. I could still put that link um, in the description, but probably what I really want to do is just use the link to my blog post. So I could actually just link this book straight to Amazon like that. Um, that one should work, and then I can choose a board. And I'm going to find that... Um, Genius of Solitude one that I made. So it says I created a pin. Great. It also is really trying to focus on advertising. It's, it's really pushing me pretty hard to promote my pins, um, which I'm not going to do right now, but I, I'm interested in trying this out and seeing how it works. So now I have two images. Um, this one's actually saved from Airbnb. And this one goes straight to Amazon.com. So if someone finds my pin, they can click over to actually see that book, which is kind of cool. But I want to do a lot more. I'm going to go up here again. Um, I'm actually going to edit this part. And I'll try posting my whole blurb in again. Whoops. Hold on. Maybe I'll even link that, leave that link at the bottom. Yeah, so this is going to limit me also. So I'll just do that and see.
So I added, I added my blurb here, um, and that's okay. The problem is probably that it's not a really strong call to action, and I'm not really using any of those keywords I found. So I took all my keywords, or a bunch of them, and I just tried to make them into kind of one sentence. So I'll see if I can put that in here. So I tried to boost this out a bit. Now I have inspirational quotes on solitude, the loneliness of creative genius, and the true roots of creative anxiety. So I've got a bunch of stuff there. Why do creative people seem to struggle with um, anxiety and depression? That's actually, I'm duplicating creative, creative, anxiety, anxiety several times. Um, I don't need that much. There's actually a break here, but I couldn't get it to break. I'll see if it accepts HTML. Nope. So you can't actually do very much with formatting or style. Anyway, probably people don't really read all of this anyway, but it's got a bunch of keywords in it now. Um, it also has a call to action, which is just pin your favorite quote. So I thought about um, having a link here or having them try to go somewhere, but hopefully if they're going through this um, board, they'll see the book and they'll click over to Amazon. Or all the pictures that I add are going to go to that blog post, which has a link to Amazon. So now that this is set up a little bit more, I'm going to add some more pins. Um, but this time I'm going to try to save from site. So I'm going to go back over to my blog and just grab this whole link to this blog post. And then it's going to pull the pictures from my website. Um, so I'm going to skip the first few and I'm going to look for these big image quotes. I think I can actually add more than one at a time. Um, I'll go down and try to add a few. Nope, maybe not. So I'll just do one, add to pin. I have to do a title again, but it already has that link. So I can just choose a board. And I can add a title and say something about this pin. So I probably want a different title um, for each one. And I'm not quite sure what I want to say about this pin. So here's what I'm doing for the first one. Um, I just added kind of a call out from the quote. I typed up the whole quote here, and then I just wrote, Excerpt from the Genius of Solitude, and then a call to action, get more inspirational quotes on solitude, the loneliness of creative genius, true roots of creative anxiety. This still needs to be edited a little bit. I changed it to artistic anxiety, um, and that's probably fine. So I'm going to save that. I'm also going to keep this part so I can just copy and paste it next time. I'll just paste it over here. So now I have one. I'm going to close that box and try to do it again. I'm going to have to remember which ones I've already uploaded and which ones are new. Um, so I have to be paying a little bit of attention. I'll do this one next. So I did um, these two. I basically did the same thing on this one. So if I zoom in, you should see the link to the blog post, um, and then the short description that I wrote. I'm going to see if I can go a little bit faster um, by going up here to the Pinterest icon I've got in my browser, and then just grabbing um, some of these on my website. I think I can just pick a board and save it, and it goes through um, right away. Later I could go back and customize it or tweak um, the description. So this is working um, a little bit faster, although I have to kind of keep doing it over and over again. It is getting kind of hard to see which ones I've already um, uploaded, but I'll go back and check. So I have another plugin called FooBox, F-O-O Box, F -O -O Box um, on my website, which gives me this lay little layover, and that's actually faster, I think, than the Pinterest button um, up here. So I've just been scrolling down and adding all these images. I get a pop-up like this, and then I can just put them right in the right place. It could be for anyway. So I'll just add it to that board, it gets saved, I close the window. 
Um, and I've also been alternating between these big ones that I have on one blog post and these smaller ones I have um, on another blog post. So I'm just going through and saving each of those. There's probably a way to bulk up bulk bulk upload all of these pictures um, at once with Pinterest. But for now, this process seems to be working. And so now on my Pinterest board, if I reload it, um, it's got all these quotes on here. So because it's just I'm posting straight from my blog post, I haven't customized all the, all the text. So um, every one just shows the blog post article. So it's this quote and it shows the blog post article directly, which isn't great. I really should go back and customize um, each of these individually over here. But I'll um, do that after I've got all these uploaded. There's also some duplicates. Um, so some of these I'm going to have to go in and delete. So I added um, 62 pins altogether. I added a little bit more to my headline of this particular board. I'm not sure if that really matters. I really should put more keywords up here, but you don't want it to be too long or to look like it's stuffed with keywords. And then I just added all of these image images from my blog post. Um, I made these in Photoshop and you need to be careful. These are all royalty free pictures that I got from free stock photography sites like Pexels or Unsplash. Um, and then I have the creative uh, license to use the fonts. But even if you're making graphics like this, you can't just grab whatever pictures online. You have to make sure you have the right licenses. Um, Canva is really good for making uh, graphics like this. And then I also have a tool on DIYcovers.com that um, will be awesome once I make a bunch of templates for it. Right now it's a really powerful tool, but um, I haven't made all the templates. So I added all these pins, but the first thing we need to do is get some visibility. I have some followers already, even though I don't really use um, Pinterest, but it's not really enough to get these sharing. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, we can focus on the keywords. So I really should go back um, and edit all of these and you know add a big description here, probably just like I was doing before with the quote um, and then the same sentence at the bottom. That's going to take a while, so I'll do that later. The other thing uh, you could do is ask your audience to share if I have these on my website or if I'm a little more vocal about saying, hey, could you repin this? Um, that could work, especially if you already have a community of writers who write in your genre or in your field. You can kind of cross promote your Pinterest pages a little bit. But the big win is going to be um, groups. So there are actually sites where you can do research and find um, joint boards that are kind of like groups where you can apply to post your pin on their boards. And they're kind of community boards, so some of them have lots and lots of followers. So I would want to reach out to um, group boards that are about solitude or loneliness or isolation or creativity, depression, anxiety, and I'd pick my best pin quote um, that I think they would like and I would submit it or ask them if I can post my pin to their board. So that would be a great way to get some visibility for an individual pin. Um, you could also use this promote tab, which is like advertising, and I actually will test it. I'll do it on this one, which I think is the most um, powerful, clear, simple quote that, that people really respond to the most. So I might boost that one, even though it's not a direct call to action. Um, but what I would really want somewhere in here um, that I should make, down here I have like at the beginning of the board, I have this picture that's a 3D image and it links to Amazon. Um, I should make another one of these, but I should summarize, I should have like this picture at the top, but then make it a longer image with a checklist of the benefits or um, a review or something like that that's a little bit more credibility boosting. So people could look at the image and see what it's all about, um, see the benefits and the highlights and the review, and then there would be a call to action or there might be a special deal or a discount that would kind of tell them what's going on just to make it a lot more likely that they'll click that button. Even in all these other ones, I say something like, you know, go to the website to see more quotes. Um, but I could also say something like, make sure to get the book on Amazon. If I had um, that kind of a board, I might, if I had that kind of a, like an advertisement, I would try to promote that and see if it works. I'm not sure that it would work 
on Pinterest. Um, if you had a new book release, though, I think I would do it anyway. So I might set that up just to show you what it looks like. Um, and then I would also probably advertise something that's like a board cover. Um, right now, like if I just count all these quotes, I don't know if it's exactly right, but I have um, 62 pins. So it's, I probably have like 60 pins about solitude. So if I make um, a board cover that says something like 60 amazing quotes about solitude, um, and I'll make one of those, if that's one pin, I could promote that board cover pin, um, and that might get a lot of traffic back to this board, and then they can look around. So it's kind of like a little mini funnel um, to the book. Since I'm here, I'm also curious about this new feature, which is you can make um, a pin with a video. So I'm actually going to try that out also. I actually couldn't upload a video from YouTube directly with the link. Um, it might have worked if I had it self-hosted on my website or something, but instead I'm just trying to do it from my phone. I'm up uploading the video to this board. Um, and I'm going to click on this and kind of show you what I did. I added a couple of things. One is this big image. So it's 60 inspiring quotes about creative solitude. That's something that I could promote that might work. Um, and then here I have actually a deal, um, a launch special. The graphics don't look like they came out so well, actually. Um, I didn't do a great job of this, but I might try it out anyway. It's really kind of a very clear salesy calls to action. That may not work at all for Pinterest, um, but hopefully if I promote some stuff and they click through this whole gallery, they'll see that offer. And if they like all of this other stuff, um, they might be interested in at least checking it out or going to Amazon. I could probably later take away this sale price and just um, focus on the benefits and the features, maybe put a nice review or something instead um, and still go straight to Amazon. Anyway, I can't get the video um, to upload, but what I'm going to do now is actually advertise a few of these to see um, if it's going to work at all. So I'm basically competing with Facebook ads, BookBub ads, or um, Amazon ads, which are probably cheaper and more direct. I'm guessing if I promote these, um, I might get a lot of views. I probably wouldn't get any comments or repins um, on this promotional one, maybe on some of the other quotes, hopefully. So, but I don't think like it'll really lead to sales, like direct sales. What it might do though is lead to long-term traffic to my blog posts. Um, and if that happens, I'll be getting sales from my blog posts. So maybe if I kick some of these off with a little bit of money in ads um, and they get pinned around other places, that might work for long-term benefits. It's not the greatest way, like when you're uh, launching a book, um, you want to be careful not to overspend on stuff that doesn't see a direct benefit or that you can't measure. On the other hand, um, if this is a little something you can do to set yourself up for really long-term book sales, then it's kind of an easy win. So I set one up. Pinterest is actually telling me it's going to cost 59 cents per click. Um, that's a lot if I'm sending them back to my website. It'd be maybe not so bad if I was sending them straight to um, Amazon, but because it's at 99 cents, if I'm paying 59 cents per click, I would have to get like 100% conversion, um, even just to break even, and that's really unlikely. Generally, um, depends how well you screen your audience before they click. Um, like if they really know what they're getting and they really want the book before they click, then they're more likely to convert on the Amazon page. However, because this is a brand new book, it doesn't even have reviews on Amazon yet, um, it's really not going to convert very well. So I'd still be willing to kind of try it out um, and just see if I get a lot of visibility or repins. That's kind of what I'm going for actually more than the clicks. And maybe I can set up something different than a traffic campaign. Um, I'll see if I, I chose the wrong settings or something. But then I can choose a target audience down here. And this is kind of cool because it'll suggest um, things. So for example, it suggests depression quotes deep, but spelling depression wrong because a lot of people search for that, I guess. Um, so I can include that as a keyword. And when people search for those, they'll see this image. Um, 60 inspiring quotes about creative solitude. They might click through and read some of those other quotes, hopefully repin them on their own boards. So I'm going to try that one and set it up. So now that I've um, updated my credit card and I'm actually in the ads dashboard, I can set up a new campaign. 
Um, and I can change it to brand awareness, video views, traffic, or an app install. Um, and it's kind of cool that they do video views. I haven't really figured out um, retargeting ads yet, but that's kind of the direction that I'm moving in. So for example, when someone lands on a specific website of mine, um, maybe they were interested in the article. So this is all pretty advanced stuff with book marketing, but if I did a lot of brand awareness and I just showed all of those pins to people and they pinned them on their boards, um, and then hopefully they got over to one of my blog posts about this book where I have links to go buy the book on Amazon. If I had um, a Facebook tracking pixel on this website um, or from Pinterest or YouTube, I could show videos or ads to those people who have already been on my website. So maybe they already kind of knew about my book, they just didn't buy it. Um, after I know that they've been on this blog post and they've read a little bit about it, I could show them um, a video ad for the book or just another ad like that, um, buy the book straight to Amazon. Um, I could show it to them on Pinterest, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And those kind of ads, because you're not really showing it to a stranger, you're showing it to someone who already is kind of aware of the book and maybe has already seen your website, um, it's more likely to be successful. It's more likely to convert, which means you'll spend less on the advertising. I can also create an audience. I think I could create an audience from my, my email list or, or visitors to my website. Um, you can pick locations or ages, languages. Um, I'm actually going to set this one to English because unless their English is really, really good, they're not really going to appreciate this book. It's kind of high level. Um, I made that mistake recently with Facebook. I didn't cite English as the language and um, I set Europe as one of the locations. So I got a ton of displays my Facebook ads on a bunch of people who couldn't read the ad copy. So they just clicked on the image because it was a cool image. Um, and I spent a lot of money on the wrong audience basically and they didn't convert. I could also go in here um, and expand my targeting or add other interests. I'm probably not going to um, at this point. Then I'll add a bunch of keywords. Here with the budgeting, you want to be a little careful with advertising. You want to spend um, as little as possible at first just to kind of see if it's working. Normally what's going to happen is your first clicks, you'll spend money pretty quickly, but it'll be the wrong kind of clicks. People will be searching for different things. And once you figure out what those wrong things are, you can set them up as negative keywords so they don't um, show anymore. They don't, they don't trigger your ads. I'm going to set a daily budget of $10 a day, um, or you could set a lifetime budget of maybe 50 total, which is a little safer in case you forget to turn them off. Um, $10 a day is still 300 bucks a month, so you want to be a little careful. And because this one is for brand awareness and not for clicks, um, it's a higher price point, but it's for, I'm not exactly sure, I think this is per thousand views, um, but it might be different, it doesn't really say. It tells me that two um, is too low, and when I try to put in one, it tells me like I can't do it. It has to be at least two. Um, so I'll just use that for now. And then I can add pins to my ad group. So all of these ads now um, are just linking back straight to my blog post. So on this other one, I'm trying to set a daily budget and it tells me um, it's too low for 25 cents. I'm going to try to just do it anyway and see if it'll let me continue. So it might not display if it's um, if the bid is too low, it might not display. On the other hand, I don't really trust their recommendations. Amazon recently um, pushed their recommended bid a lot higher, so now everybody is just bidding too high, so it means it costs everybody more money for no reason. Because this one's a direct ad to my website, I'm just going to use this one I think and we'll see how well it actually performs. This one will just go straight to Amazon. Um, maybe I'll use this one too. It'll go straight to my website. So I'm just paying for actual clicks though. So getting them to my website's probably not that great unless I'm also retargeting them afterwards. Maybe that one too. So I can remove the ads, um, launch and there it goes. 
So again, I don't think advertising on Pinterest is going to be a, a long-term strategy. I think possibly um, to get a few pins sticky in a lot of shared groups so that you're getting long-term organic traffic back to your sales page for your book. I think that could really help a lot. Um, what I would really need to do though, um, these are just blog posts. These are not great landing pages for a book. So I'm redoing all of my websites right now um, and each book will have its own full width landing page that really sells the book um, with big, you know, uh, social proof and uh, teaser quotes um, and big buy now buttons or discounts or whatever. So um, if I can get someone to go from Pinterest to my landing page, it, there's going to be a much higher conversion rate or there's going to be something to get their attention like a giveaway or read the first free the free, free chapter the first chapter for free um, there'll just be more of like a funnel or a process right now if people land on this page they're pretty likely just to kind of scroll through and not do anything because they're just lots of content um, there's not a really clear call to action anywhere so that's some stuff i can fix um, later on i'm just kind of seeing if pinterest will work I think like any other platform, especially a social platform, um, to really do it well, you're supposed to pin maybe five or 10 posts, um, pins a day for your boards to keep them fresh and to keep them up. Um, this is something you could really outsource, but it doesn't take very long, you know, like a minute to put, to pin five pins. And you kind of just look around for cool or interesting stuff um, to keep your posts active. Then whenever you post a new blog post, um, you could pin your new blog post to Pinterest. I'll show you a couple other things I found that I thought were cool. Um, the th kind of things I think would actually work. So here's a pin of a uh, common sword types. So you can see just one image. There's no like branding. It doesn't try to get you to go to any website, um, but it's just really useful and really clear. It tells you the, the shape, the size, the length, um, and the name. So all the information is just right there. Um, here's another one, free stock images websites. It just tells you all the sites. So this would be a lot more useful like on a blog post where you could just click on these. Um, but still, it's really useful just to see all the value in the actual pin. Um, here's another one. This is almost an ad from BookBub, but it's a really nice, pretty image, a really great font um, with the clear benefits. Download thousands of eBooks without spending a penny. This is the whole call to action and the benefits um, or the unique selling proposition. So this would work really well as an ad, um, which I would like to try to kind of reverse engineer. I should be doing something kind of like this for some of my template sites. But for example, if you had a book, this is about bookmark size. So if you had um, bookmarks printed, which looked kind of like this, you may not even want to put the book cover on it because I think it's probably stronger with an attractive image um, and just the brand name and then the the benefit. Um, and then here's another really good one. It's just 10 must read books for every professional woman. This is the kind of blog post content you should be making anyway. But if you, as long as you're making this kind of content, you do this because um, if you have a book that you think professional women would want to read, you want to make sure you know all the ones that they're already interested in or they've seen before, or maybe they've read before, um, or you want to be recommending things because if if you get them on your website and you sell them a book and they also buy some of these books, this will improve your also bots, um, which is good for long-term visibility. So you want to be making lots of posts like this. And then as long as you're making a post, like a list of best books, um, you should make a Pinterest graphic like this as well. Same thing with like checklists, 10 ways to do whatever. Um, I have lots of posts on my, my blog and I've made some like Pinterest images with the title, but I haven't really made a lot of infographics that just have all the information um, in there like this. And they can be really, really useful. The The closest one I probably have um, is this one. And it looks like I didn't even pin this one to Pinterest. Um, but this is the kind of thing that's a really good infographic. People will probably share it. So I can just go ahead and do that um, now. And I'll just pick the board that it belongs in. how to write a book, writing prompts. I think it's that one. And then I could also promote um, this pin a little bit, which I might want to do because I think that's a pretty good one people will share. 
So I set a three-day budget. I'll spend 30 bucks um, on that. It says again, I'm gonna play 40 cent, 46 cents per click, um, which kind of sucks. I'm not sure where I can edit that right now. As long as I'm driving traffic um, to this blog post, I really should have a call to action for an opt-in, um, something that's a content upgrade specific for this. Or eventually I have a, a course on writing, so I, this should really be like part of a funnel. Um, so it's possible, depending on the price of my course, um, even if I'm paying like 50 cents per click um, from Pinterest, which is a little high, but maybe less than I could get from, from Facebook. It depends kind of what I'm trying to advertise. If I have a $50 course um, and I get two clicks for a dollar, then for $25, um, I would get about 50 clicks and maybe one person would actually buy my course. So if that's possible, it means I spent $25 and I made $50, um, which is great. I doubled my money. So if something like that actually works, if you have a really good funnel set up, um, then Pinterest might be a good way to reach people. So you can see, for example, other people have pinned this same pin and it's gotten 5,000 impressions, um, 300 close-ups, 50 saves, and only 25 clicks. So even though it's kind of doing pretty well on Pinterest, a lot of people just look around on Pinterest um, and they save stuff to their own boards kind of so that they can go back and find it later. It's kind of like a folder where they save things. So a lot of people won't actually click back and go onto the website. However, I do think that um, because Pinterest is such a big site that Google gives some priority to um, the SEO or the rankings if you have a lot of images pinned. So even though not many people are going directly to my website through Pinterest, um, it might make this blog post rank better on Google, which would bring more.